Church. Welcome to the Sunday School television broadcast. This program is designed to minister to those of you who are unable to attend Sunday School at your local church at each Sunday morning. Each week we will provide a review of the international Sunday School lessons taught in church schools around the country. Reverend Dr. Willie Stooks is our program producer. I am Reverend Dr. Gail Badger at the New Mount Zion Baptist Church. This morning we are broadcasting from my church where the Reverend Dr. Carl L. Washington Jr. serves as pastor and he is also the moderator of the United Missionary Baptist Association. I will be your expositor for this morning. Today we will examine the lesson for December 11, 2016. Our theme will be the affirmation of the promise to validate or confirm God's promise. So turn with me, if you will, to the Gospel of Luke. We'll be looking at the first chapter, beginning at the 39th verse. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, and it reads, A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea, to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclamation to Mary. God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? When I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. You are blessed because you believe, and the Lord would do what he said. Mary responded, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he took notice of this lowly servant girl. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy, and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all those who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and the haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful, for he made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back to her own home. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God, and it is already blessed. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, Lord God, we come to you on this Sunday morning, Lord God, because you have a word for those of your servants who are home, Lord God. So move everything out of the way that is not of you, Lord God. Bless this Sunday school broadcast today. Let it minister to the mind and hearts of those, Lord God, who are hungry, who are thirsty for your word. We will be careful, Lord God, to forever give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. Hide me behind the cross. Let there be none of me and all of you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. In the beginning of this gospel, we, we learn that Luke is its author. He was a physician, a man of precision, a man who dealt with the facts, just the facts. His purpose was to prepare an, an accurate account of the birth of Jesus, the expected Messiah, for someone named Theopolis. He was writing to Theopolis so that Theopolis would know the truth. He would know the truth about who Jesus was and how Jesus got here. Luke is also recognized for highlighting the role of women in biblical times more than any other gospel writer. Our subject text is an example of that. He was careful to recount all of the details that took place concerning the birth of our Savior and these two women who are the subjects of this story. So this text may be a familiar text to some of us, but for those of you who do not know the story, let's start at verse 39. Mary is hurrying to visit her relative, whose name is Elizabeth. Now let me pause here. Jews in those days were waiting for their Savior, their promised Messiah, to come and redeem the people. The story opens with Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah. He was a priest. They were a very devout family. They were very religious. 
In those times, priests were chosen to serve in the temple by lot. Since there were so many priests, being chosen to serve was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Now hold that thought. So it happened that one day while he was serving, the angel of the Lord came and stood at the right side of the altar. The angel told Zechariah that his wife would become pregnant and conceive a son. Zechariah could not believe such a thing. The message that the angel was saying did not make sense. In fact, he recounted all the reasons why the angel, well, what the angel was saying was impossible. He said that he and his wife were too old to have a child because he doubted the message that God sent. God silenced him from speaking until his baby child was born. Don't you know that when God tells us something, we refuse to believe? When we put God, we all put God in a little box, and that little box says that God cannot do what God can do. That's a dangerous place to place the Lord. Pay attention. Zechariah was serving in a place that was a once in a lifetime opportunity given to him by chance. Or was it God's hand at work in his life bringing about his divine plan? You see, they knew the scriptures. We too know now that God can and will do if for us if we do believe and that he can show us better than he can tell us. When, he, when we don't believe, he cannot be faithful, but when we do believe, he will be faithful to all of his promises. They knew that God had promised their ancestor Abraham that he would be the father of a great nation. Isaiah the prophet of old prophesied that a young virgin would give birth to the one that we now know is the savior of our people. So in verse 39, we see this young virgin girl, Mary, running off to her relative to tell her all about her good fortune. Now you may ask, well, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said the, the lady was a virgin. The girl was a virgin. She had never been with a man. Yes, but our theme speaks about the affirmation of the promise. God promised that he would provide a savior for his people. The prophet Isaiah let it be known that this special child would be conceived of someone who would be the least likely to be picked for this assignment, a servant girl. God sent an angel named Gabriel to tell Mary that he had found favor with her, that she was chosen to give birth to a son who would redeem his people, Israel. That is why we see an excited Mary running off to tell somebody the good news. Mary knew that she had not been with a man. She was engaged to a man named Joseph. The text does not say that he went with her Mary went to see Elizabeth by herself. Sometime when God calls us to do something, we have to go by ourselves. We can't take anybody with us to ask a lot of questions and to try to convince us that we are crazy. Don't you know that sometimes you can't tell everyone how God is working in your life? They won't all want to celebrate with you. If you have to tell it, you have to go find someone who will understand, someone you can trust someone who is not going to go tell all your business. So she went to Elizabeth, the older woman, who was with her family. A woman, as God would have it, was barren all of her life. But God had a plan. She too would conceive and give birth to a son who would be given a divine assignment. Her son was to tell everyone about the arrival of the Messiah. His name would be John, John the Baptist. So Mary visits Elizabeth, who helps her to understand what has happened to her, that she had been blessed by God. Immediately, Elizabeth knew that something special happened to Mary. When the Lord is in the house, the atmosphere shifts. Verse 41 tells us that Mary entered the house, and Elizabeth heard her greeting, and the baby leaped within her. Verse 41 also tells us, as Elizabeth became filled with the Holy Spirit, she felt that Mary had been blessed by God. The Holy Spirit fell upon the scene, and Elizabeth became the witness, yes. It was not a coincidence that when Mary entered that Elizabeth's baby leaped within her. Scripture tells us that God knows us even in our mother's womb. Jesus had entered the area. He was there inside Mary. So now that we look at examine verse 45, it reflects that Elizabeth, being older and wiser and pregnant herself, was able to help Mary to understand that she was blessed because 
she believed. Let me say that again. She was blessed because she believed. Mary was not filled with apprehension and doubt, nor did she get a haughty spirit and get all puffed up attitude. Mary immediately began to sing a song of praise to her God. Verse 46 tells us that she cried out that her soul praises the Lord. She realized that God had a divine purpose for her womb. A servant girl, a girl with no one would suspect could serve such a divine role for God, has found favor in God's sight. Verses 46 through 55 is a song of praise that Mary sang, which is known as the Magnificat, which means to magnify. Mary began to magnify the Lord for using her. She praised him for being a faithful God. She gave him glory for all he had done and all that he was about to do. She sang of how God would use a lowly servant girl to bring about the savior of the world. Back then, women were not valued at all. They were, they were nothing, but she, a lowly servant girl, was looked upon for this great assignment. Mary's song also told about God's promise of reversal. Yes, I did, I said, God's promise of reversal. God would bring down those sitting high and raise up the lowly. How God would fill the hungry and send the rich away empty. He would send his son to bring the good news to the poor and the downtrodden. Her song would give us a look, a clue into the earthly ministry of her son, Jesus. We would learn from her song of praise that God is consistently faithful. He is merciful. She celebrates because she now understands that if we revere God and fear him and do not doubt that he will help us by keeping his promises to us and his people from generation to generation so all will believe that God is faithful to his promise. So what have we learned this morning, Sister Preacher? I'm glad that you're asking that question of yourself. We've learned that God has always and will always be a faithful God who has kept his promises from generation to generation. We learned that he allowed an older barren woman to conceive a son so that his plan for our salvation could be made known to the whole world. Elizabeth's son, John, became known as the forerunner for Jesus. He announced Jesus' coming. Just when we think we can't do any more, God can raise us up for his purposes. We serve a God who cannot fail. We serve a God that has something new every morning for us. We just have to be willing to trust and obey him. The text teaches us that just when we think all hope is gone, somehow, some way, everything turns out all right. We have a Romans 8.28 moment. All things work together for good for those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. See, God is a transforming God, a power-shifting God, an atmosphere-shifting God. He uses everything he wants and everybody he wants to, to, to get the glory out of that which he is doing. We also learn that it is important to not tell everybody everything. Mary went away and found someone who was older, wiser, and who would appreciate what she was going through. She found someone who would not judge her but rejoice with her. She found someone who would encourage her. We have to become encouragers. Don't hate, celebrate what God is doing in the lives of our brothers and our sisters. What he has done for them, he can do for you also. You just have to put your mind and your heart in a place to believe his promises. We learn that we must give God the praise, give God the glory before, during, and after he starts working in our lives. And we have to tell him, thank you and praise the Lord. Let him know that you are available for whatever he wants you to do. We learn that there is nothing too hard for God. God used a servant girl who was a virgin to conceive a son who would become the king of kings, hallelujah, and the Lord of lords. But he did not use a princess or the daughter of a religious man. No, he chose someone who no one would ever have thought could amount to anything. Someone insignificant, a nobody whose name he made blessed throughout all the generations. God can use whomever he chooses to accomplish his divine purposes in this world. So don't ever think that you are not special enough and you cannot be used by God. Just be ready to answer yes when he calls upon you. Amen. 
So on behalf of the John L. Scott Associate Ministers Auxiliary of the United Missionary Baptist Association, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And always remember, all you have to do is trust and obey and believe and have faith in God. And he will accomplish mighty things in your life for his kingdom. Amen? Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come to you right now, Lord God. We thank you for this lesson. You let us know that there's no one who cannot be used by you. You let us know that there's no one that's too insignificant, Lord God. You let us know that all we have to do is humble ourselves, Father God, and just be ready and available to be used for your great purposes. We thank you today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We trust that your word has gone to the hearts and minds of those who are home watching by television, Father God, or watching on their computer, on their iPad, or on this, their cell phone. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to bring your word to those who cannot make it out to your house, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, until the next time, I ask that you bless all of those who heard this word today. In Jesus' name, we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So until the next time, be blessed. And remember, God keeps his promises. Amen. 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 Amen.